This is Tom Dillon. The Lifetime Liberal, and today is Friday, November 6, 2020. Uh, the title of this rant is, The War of Ideas Rages On Unendingly. So uh, hopefully Joe will be uh, the president-elect later today. And uh, the Democrats didn't do nearly as well as they thought they were going to do. Uh, even Republican pollsters said that uh, they wouldn't do they would do much better than what they did. So there's a lot of work that the Democrats have to do. But let's try and admit some things right now is that, number one, Trumpism is here to stay. It worked for them. It worked for them for a long time, and it probably kept a lot of Republicans, let's say, in state uh, state legislatures, House legislatures uh, around the country in power. It kept, let's just say, Susan Collins, who we thought we were going to get rid of, and Joni Ernst, and Mel, you know, that Tillis guy, and Graham got, got reelected, and so did Cornyn, because it worked for them. They know it works for them, and they're going to promote it. And that's going to be a big heaping dose of deregulation, tax cuts for the rich, uh, conspiracy theories, hoax, deep state, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Oil is good. Oil is great. Uh, and uh, it's worked for them. And let's not forget that there is going to be, you know, uh, not only an extra heaping, a triple, quadruple heaping of racism because it has worked for them. They know their audience. They target their audience and it works for them. And they have a lot of power, all those senators that I just mentioned. They are going to push their ideology, let's just say, bigly, you know, from now on, because the, the the race for 2022 is technically on right now. And the president and the president's party often do poorly in those off-year elections. So uh, they're going to try and hold anything Biden can do and anything that this, the House can do. And it will only work for the Democrats if there is two runoffs in in Georgia and they win them both. But they're going to push that ideology. Now, I know the Democrats are going to fight hard. I know that Joe, let's just say, can do a heck of a lot by executive action. Number one, getting rid of all of the Trump stuff. He could do a heck of a lot uh, without that. But in terms of some of the things that Democrats have been really pushing for, uh, especially those on the progressive end, global climate change, comprehensive immigration reform, increasing the minimum wage up to $15 an hour, and a whole host of other things that we all know about. You know, that that is a good chance that will not happen. We will only, and I'm being very honest, only be looking at marginal gains. But the fight must go on because our Republican friends, they're clever, they're sneaky, they have a whole host of social scientists and the linguistics coming up with their gotcha sayings, uh, et cetera. Because remember Bush's couple, what, did we, what were his gotcha sayings? Tax relief, remember that? Yeah, taxes are bad. I'm here to give you relief. Uh, what was the other thing? Oh, uh, I'm a compassionate conservative, a complete oxymoron. But hey, it worked. And they know that this will work with those people that they know vote. So grievance, et cetera, is going to be around quite a bit. Now, the last thing I'd like to say about all of this is that from what we see from all of this, that Democrats in red areas, whether it be states uh, or in House districts, uh, they may be getting hurt a tremendous amount by the pushback that the right is doing against the more progressive members of our House and Senate uh, in terms of we need to stop saying anything about socialism, about universal health care, uh, about single payer, Medicare for all. We want to get better health care, period. Just like Nancy did in 2018, she said health care, health care, health care. We can't be adding to the fire to the Republican talking points by going into that. We have to learn our lesson. We have to get our framing down and put it out there so that we can win this unending war of ideas.